Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to episode two of the Ultimate Cybersecurity Lab Project. In the previous episode, we built our PFSense firewall. We then built the Kali Linux VM. Then we logged into the firewall. We configured the VLANs. We added the DHCP config and we created all those firewall rules. Then we went and built the Ubuntu VM. We added Docker and we also added Portainer. So in part two of this series, we are gonna build all our vulnerable machines. So we are going to build the Metasploitable 2 VM that comes with the Unvulnerable Web App already. Then we're going to go and add a number of containers. So we're going to build Buggy Web App, a Dom Vulnerable Web App container, and then we'll build WebGoat. If you haven't seen the first episode and you want to follow along with this lab, then I suggest that you go back, watch the first episode because we build a firewall and make all those network changes. So you need to do that first before we can continue on with this episode. So go back, watch that one and then come back here. We'll start off today by building the Metasploitable 2 VM. So let's click on create VM. I'm going to change my ID to 204. I'm going to call this prod and there's two and then we'll go next i'm going to choose do not use any media go next next again and then i'm going to switch the device so i'm going to set mine to ide this is totally fine you can leave all this like that go next again next again next again then we are going to select the network that we created so this server will be in vlan 10 so select the vmbr2 which is the lab lan that we created previously and i'm going to put it in VLAN 10, so just enter 10 in the tag box. Click next again, and then on finish. Once you've done that, we need to SSH into the Proxmox server. And this is where we're gonna download the Metasploitable 2 image. I'm just gonna open up a terminal. I'm gonna SSH to root at 0.14. So that is my server IP. I'm gonna enter my password and I'm logged in. So let's go to the location where all the images are stored. So cd var nib vz images. So in here, we're just gonna create a new folder. I'm just gonna call it 204, which is the ID of the VM. So mkdr204, let's go into that directory. Now we're gonna use the wget command to go out and pull down the Metasploitable 2 VM. I'll put this in the comment box below so you can just copy and paste it. Paste that in there and enter. Okay, that's done. So let's unzip that. So unzip Metasploitable 2. Okay, so we see that is now there. So let's go into that folder and check what files are there. So, so we can see that I have downloaded one, two, three, four. So there's five files in here. The file we need is this Metasploitable VMDK. So we need to convert that to a QCOW2 file. And then we are going to attach that QCOW2 file to the VM that we've just created. So we're going to swap the disks so it uses that. So let's convert this file. Again, I will put this command in the description box below. So I'll paste it in here. Okay, let's do that. And as you can see, that is done. So let's move that file to the directory above. Let's go back and then we'll check does it exist here. So that is there. Now we've converted that disk to QCAR2. Let's go to the VM config file and tell that VM that it has to use that file. Back in your terminal, let's go to the folder. So DCPVE, it is in the Let's check this here. This folder contains a config file for each of the VMs that we've created. So let's just open 204. So we can see that it is using this QCAR2 file here. This is what we need to swap. So we need to tell it to use the Metasploitable 2 QCAR2 file that we just created. So let's open that. Nano 204. I'm gonna move down here and I'm gonna delete this bit out. I'm gonna say file equals local and then the directory where the QCAR2 file lives. So that's 204. And then the name of the file that we created. So it's metasploitable dot QCAR2. Okay, so then I control and X. I'm gonna hit Y to save and then enter. 
So let's just open that again. 204. Okay, so that looks like it's worked. Okay, so back in Proxmox now, just go to hardware. I just want to make sure that it has updated here so we can see it's going to use this metasploitable.kukai2 file. So let's just go to console and hit on start. Okay, that looks like it's working. To log in is MSF admin and then the password is MSF admin again. So let's check the IP address. So we can see we're on 10.10.10.51. So it is getting an IP address within VLAN 10, which is exactly what we wanted. Let's see if we can ping our firewall. Ping a firewall and uh, let's just see if DNS is working. So let's ping google.com. Perfect. Okay, so the machine is built. Let's go back to Kali. And then let's see if we can browse to the Metasploitable VM. So I'm just gonna log in. Up this, so 10.10.10.51. Okay, that looks like it works. As you can see, this has a number of different services built into it, and one of them is Down Vulnerable Web App, which is another service we wanted to build in that network. I'm gonna deploy a number of containers anyway, and this is also available as a container, so I'm just gonna deploy it in Portainer anyway. So let's continue on, and we'll start to build all our containers. I've logged back into Portainer and I've connected to my own live environment. So this is my current server. Under containers, you will see that I have the Portainer container that we created last week. Let's just click an add container and just test. I'm just gonna call this Nginx. I'm gonna call it test. Oh. So we wanna pull down the Nginx image. I'm going to then modify some of these ports. If I say, let's do 8888 and then we'll do port 80 here. And let's just deploy. So this is just going to download the Nginx container just so we know it actually works. Okay, so this is this is working now. And so click into the container. Let's just go up here and go 10.10.30.50.8888. Okay, so we know that works. That I'm now browsing the Nginx container. Now one problem you'll notice here is that it's currently using the same IP as the host. So we're browsing to the same IP address of that Docker server. What I want is all my containers to be on their own individual IP addresses within that network. That way I can set up the vulnerability scanner from Nessus to scan the subnet and all of the containers and stuff that's in there. To do that, we need to configure a NAC VLAN within Portainer. So to make those network changes, let's go into networks and click on add network. We're gonna add two different network settings here. So this is gonna be called VLAN30-config. I'm gonna select Mac VLAN. And then at this stage, what I need to add to here is the name of my network adapter for the Docker server. Now you can easily SSH into the Docker server itself and just do IPA in order to find the name. So let's do that first. So let's open up the terminal. We are going to ssh shared at 10.10.30.50. Put in my password. I can do an IPA. And as you can see here under this, so 10, 10, 10. So you can see the name of my adapter is this one. So I'm going to copy that. I'm gonna go back here and I'm just gonna paste that in there. Under this subnet, so this network is on the 10.10.30 subnet, so I'm gonna do 10.10.30.0/24. So the gateway for this is the firewall, so 10.10.30.254. Now the range is, so this is the range of IP addresses that you want these containers to get. So what I need to do here is I'm actually just going to check using the subnet calculator to see what IP address range that I want to get. So I'll show you what way I've done that. So if you go to subnet calculator, 
I'm just going to choose this one. And we have the 10.10.30.0 and it is a slash 24. So once you check, you can see that we have 254 available address to give to hosts. Now remember on the firewall previously, whenever I configure DHCP, I'm using 30.50 to 30.100. So I want these containers to have something like say 30. Let's just do 150 and we'll do like a slash 27 and see what we get. So that means that will be 30 hosts and that will allow us from 3129 to 3158. So those addresses there are, are within this 10, 10, 30, 128 slash 27. So let's just copy this network. I'm going to copy that and go back to pertainer and I'm just going to paste that in there. Then I'm just going to leave the rest and click on create this network. Okay, so you will see VLAN 30 config has been created. So let's add an additional network now. I'm going to call this VLAN 30. I'm going to select Mac VLAN again. Only this time I'm going to change this. So I want to create this new network configuration and then I'm going to select VLAN 30 that we created previously. And let's just click on create this network. Okay, perfect. So if we go back to containers, I'm going to quickly just deploy an additional Nginx container and test that we're getting an IP address within that range. So Nginx VLAN 30. And I'm just going to go down and under network. I just want to select that this is going to be part of VLAN 30. And then let's click on deploy the container. So you will see this has got the 10, 10, 30, 128 IP, so which is perfect, exactly what we want. And give that 128. Perfect. So if we look back at our list, we have Buggy Web App, we have Tam Bundle Web App, and we also have Web Goat. So let's get these three containers deployed. So let's grab the containers that we need for those three apps. Now we are very lucky that they are available already on Docker Hub. I have the three links to these. So we have Buggy Web App, we also have the Dam Bundle Web App, and then the final one, which was Web Goat. And um, that makes our lives much easier. So let's go back to Buggy Web App. I'm just going to copy this command here just so I can pull that down in Portainer. So in Portainer, I'm just going to click on Add Container. I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this Fraud Buggy Web App. I'm going to go here and I'm just going to paste this in. So let's go down to the very bottom here and then I want to make sure this is in VLAN 30. And then let's just click on deploy the container. Okay, so that has downloaded. So let's copy the IP address it's got. And I'm going to go up here and paste that. And um, let's try and access that. Okay, so connection field unknown database. So it is working. We just have to go back and change this to go to the install. So we see the install pages here. Once you click here to install, then we can go back up. We can go back 10.10.30. Uh, which one is this one? This one. Log in to PHP. So you can see that that is actually working. So let's grab the command needed for downloadable web app. So let's copy that. Go back to Portainer. I'm just going to add another container. I'm going to call this prod downloadable web app. I am going to paste that in there. So it's going to pull that down. I'm going to go to network again and put this in VLAN 30. And let's click deploy container. That one is done as well. Let's get that one. Copy. And then I'm just going to go up here, paste that in and hit enter. Perfect. That is working as well. The final container we want to get is WebGo, so I'm again, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to go back to Portainer, Add Container, WebGo is the name, I'll paste that in there. I'm actually going to get rid of that dash 8. I'm going to go to Network, 
Clean on 30. And let's just apply this. Okay, so that is got 10, 10, 130. Let's copy that. Go up here. This and go. This we have to go up here and add the port and then login. Oh, it's not HTTPS. Perfect, there you go. So if we go back to our diagram, we have deployed Buggy Web App, we've also deployed Dom Bundle Web App and also Web Good Containers. So with that being said, that is it. So that is the end of part two. Um, I think we're slowly building up the lab we're building the number of machines now we have our vulnerable machines added the next thing we need to do is to start building security tools so like wazoo and nessus and all those other tools we'll do those next so then we can start to scan all those other machines and then we'll build windows and stuff so hopefully this has been helpful again thank you so much for everybody that has subscribed and liked and commented the first video was was pretty popular actually a lot of people seem to want to build this level of lab so i'm really happy you like it Again, thank you so much. Drop any questions you have into the comment box below. But again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.